Hey guys, Infidelth1258 here. Today I want to do a video and like I said in my yesterday's YouTube blog post, uh, I got busy last night celebrating an amazing graduation and a completion of a 21 week course which was really geared towards personal growth as well as greater engagement or closeness with with Jesus Christ but also like deeply thought internally self-reflective course so powerful all right it's not something we own it's like this company in and of itself and it's a very powerful course anyways I was out celebrating my graduation of that yesterday and so no video last night but this morning I did something fun and new and uh, I went ahead and I gave you guys a suggestion a, a choice between two different video ideas for today's video, which will be out tonight at midnight. Um, and uh, maybe I'll try and do this more often, especially if I feel like drawn between two ideas. And so today we are gonna be talking about SPS, but which direction am I going here? Let's look at what you guys have to say. I have two video ideas and maybe I'll do the other one later, we'll see. The first one is about the future price for SPS and the second one is about whether or not, like why is SPS where it's at right now, like below a penny still? And so you guys are more fo interested on why it's low. And so that's where we're going. 27 votes. Appreciate you guys. Uh, I have notes on this one. And so I'm going to be going through some, like uh, several different talking points. I really think this is a complicated conversation. Why is SPS low today? Why is it below a penny? Let's see where the price is right now. We're at nine. We're zero, uh, 0 0.009285. So like about a tenth of a penny or an eight, like almost a tenth of a penny below that one one cent mark that's a big drop isn't it like we were just recently at 1.1 and before the man fairly recently we we're at three point whatever like it's been in the last i want to say four months or so there there were much higher highs and so this is dramatic and significant and let's spend some time talking about it hopefully about 10 15 minute video here if you're new to my channel my name is Dwayne Cunningham I go by infidel 1258 you can call me 12 and we cover splinter lens and blockchain based video gaming because it's changed my life and I actually believe it might change yours so if that sounds interesting stick around and stay tuned okay so SPS it's below a penny what's going on like most complicated conversations it's so nuanced there's a million different considerations I have uh, several that I've written out here I think the obvious first point has to be the supply and you guys know that SPS is being issued as we play the game and it's being issued as you stake your SPS etc it's being printed and so as a result the supply is growing and as supply grows it it begins to and this is necessarily the case outweigh demand demand is if you if you imagine demand is a factor of x and even if supply is x as well then you have this like neutral stagnant price point because they're equal to each other. But in this example with SPS, we it's not if even if at one point it was XX, like supply and demand are equal, we see that because of the new printing, the supply starts growing while the demand it theoretically stays stagnant. And if the supply is growing while while demand remains stagnant, then what you have is a declining price. It's it's that simple, but there's so many more complicated things in there. The new printing of SPS is clearly part of the picture. It has to be said, don't want to spend too much time on that point because it's pretty obvious, but at the same time, it has to be said. Number two, combined with stagnant demand, meaning like, I do believe there's a degree of stagnance, is stagnancy, stability, let's say, because I'm not sure if those other two words are English words. <laughs> Uh, com combined with the stability around demand, meaning, you know, we have, what is it? I think we just heard from Matt. There's about 70,000 active accounts playing within the wild. And he, and he go, he went deep dive on a little bit of a deep dive on, on the breakdown of those. And he said, I think 30 or 40,000 of those are playing more than 50 matches a, a season. So those are pretty regular players. Those are like, you're talking about 40,000 people or accounts rather that are fairly active in the wild league and then there was about 3,000 in the modern so all told if you called it 75,000 accounts and if you called it 30 to 40,000 pretty serious accounts that are actively playing the game you have to imagine that those 30 to 40,000 accounts across both leagues have a pretty serious stake of SPS or that they would want a pretty serious of stake of SPS because they want the maximum amount of rewards possible now you might get that SPS by buying it or by renting it, whatever the case may be, or having it delegated to yourself, I suppose. 
but whatever the case may be, you would want that SPS. If you're going to play the game 50, 60, five games a day, 10 games a day, you, you imagine you, you, you want to take this, you want to have that SPS back. And so let's imagine that that set of players or accounts has been pretty stagnant for a while. And think, in fact, I think we could probably, we can probably fairly claim that ever since chaos legion prices have fallen ever since you know the last real bull, bull run that we experienced with card prices etc <clears throat> we've seen a decline in player accounts and so as a result that means that at minimum this the demand for sps has become stagnant and if demand remains stagnant obviously because for the reasons of supply growing we have a downward price movement so the first the second point is that if there's stagnant demand that is negative for price if the if the token is being issued and the third point is it actually might be worse than stagnant demand right it's probably actually negative demand or downward demand if there's fewer accounts playing then there's theoretically less desire for sps now you you there are a lot of factors for why i could point to and we'll spend about we got a five different points on why would demand be declining? Because that's the real issue. We know that supply is going up. We And therefore, if price is dropping, it could be that we either have stagnant demand on SPS or we have declining demand. And I think we have declining demand. So I'm going to give you five points on that. And that, <coughs> and that I think will really formulate the conversation around why is our price dropping? Wild League fees. This is, the, this is in my mind, one of the markers that we can point to very recently the recent proposal the past proposal alternate solutions to address bot farms in wild and modern format proposal 130. this while it has a lot of positive ramifications every proposal in a in a complicated economy has unintended consequences and i would argue that one of the unintended consequences of this is a declining sps price I think this is a factor. I'm not saying it's solely responsible. Everything is so nuanced. There's multi-factor, you know, implications and, and uh, considerations. But absolutely, when we go to, when this proposal passed, and we, again, the data in here says 70,000 accounts in wild. I want to find that data here. Some numbers. So we have 75,000 unique accounts in the wild. And, you know, 30,000 of them are playing more than 50 battles during the season. Those accounts have bags of SPS. Now, they either they either bought them or they rented them. And they probably are mostly bots. And they probably are renting them because they don't want to invest in the big SPS bag. So then what does that mean? Well, if we're telling them, if we're telling those 30,000 accounts that you're going to have to buy 2,000 DC worth of, you know, a permit every single time you play the, the season, which is starting next season. We are creating an artificial barrier to those accounts to continue desiring SPS. Do you see that? Those 30,000 accounts that are playing 50 plus battles in wild are now being told, not just the 2000 DC, by the way, where they're being told you have to pay every month, every season, a 2000 DC permit pass in order to keep earning the SPS that you, that you created this bot account to, to achieve or to unlock. And in addition to that, you know that the SPS stake requirements changed and they doubled. And so now you need more SPS and you need this permit pass. And so those are artificial barriers to these bot accounts. And that's that's the intended purpose, actually. That's the stated purpose. We want to deter those bots from being around, but recognize that as we push those bots aside, we say, we don't want you in the game. We don't want you extracting rewards from the game necessarily we change the de demand dynamics for the existing and, cr and and growing supply of sps does that make sense i want to say that in another way because i want to make sure that point is landing the unintended consequence the direct first of all the directly intended consequence of this proposal was to push away bots the unintended consequence of pushing away bots is that you reduce the number of accounts that will want to play in wild and that de declines the interest or demand for SPS, right? They were renting SPS. They were holding SPS. Either they're, either those bot owners are going to consolidate those accounts into certain bags of where they have, because they do have some amount of SPS. Maybe they'll want to keep extracting. 
we needed to see this in a few weeks really but probably if i was if i was holding a thousand bot accounts i would maybe i would want to consolidate them into a hundred bot accounts or into 10 bot accounts and you take the sps that you had scrounged and saved and earned and throw it onto those 10 accounts or 100 accounts and so i would still extract but in a different way now that's one approach to what a bot owner might say but to recognize that there's a whole swath of other players not just bot owners not just bot farms that are gonna say no like i you know this is too much i'm not gonna double my sps account or i'm not gonna uh, pay a 2000 DEC fee and part of that is a bit of a reaction sometimes I, we see it in the comments too and maybe you guys will say it in this video the reaction in, in some sense is really pointing to I don't want to pay more to get less the the question that is yet to be determined is if you pay these premiums the 2000 DEC permit pass and you, you double your SPS if your rewards outgrow that payment it's possible we don't know this yet we need a month or so a couple seasons to really ascertain whether that's true or false but right now there's some reactions happening that are probably leading to sell pressure because people are saying i'm not paying more to get less and yet we don't know if that's even true we actually don't know if if the 2000 dc for instance 2000 dc is not even two bucks right dollar valuation or you can do 40 vouchers too, which is its own price calculation, but just do it this way. 2000 DEC is e equal to something like a buck 50 US. And then you go, if you get five SPS per win in, in champion within wild, which is about two more SPS than you would have before this proposal happened. And it might be better than this, but that's like two SPS per win. And if you get 10, 12 wins a day, you're talking 24 extra uh, wins per 24 extra SPS per day. 24 SPS is 24 cents because it's roughly a penny. Well, it's a little less than that, but you know, you see my point. And so then you do that times two weeks, which is the season length. And you start to see that if the SPS grows in a relatively modest way, as I just proposed from three SPS per win to maybe five SPS per win, which is probably what I'm expecting in the wild champions area. Then you start to recognize that that's, it certainly actually will pay for itself. And so you need to think these things through and maybe step back and see it. But I think there's a reaction, a gut reaction that's happening. That's that's both um, happening to bot farms as well as individuals as driving the desire to hold SPS down because people don't want to deal with the fees that are being assigned that are going to start next season. So fewer bot accounts will be brought online as well. That's not just not just the ones that are existing, but fewer that that are going to come up that would have theoretically come along. That's going to be fewer, less future demand. Now, this approach to the game might mean more real players, which would be amazing, right? We all agree that would be amazing if there's more human players playing real accounts. Um, but we do, we shouldn't look past the fact that future, while we don't want bots, we have to recognize that the, they represented a certain amount of attention, demand, and as particularly on the Marco, mark, rental, rental market for SPS, or maybe even the holding market of SPS. Because even if they weren't buying SPS, because I think most of you will agree they weren't like actively seeking out SPS, they were earning it and then maybe sitting on it. That's still a certain amount of hold pressure, which is not a sell pressure. And that's, that is at least neutral. But you have to recognize that if it's not being put into the sell market or into the being listed for sale, it's a certain amount of supply that's kind of off limits. And so, you know, the future deterring of other bot accounts coming online is another factor because it also speaks to how much SPS will no longer be locked up. Again, these are maybe, there's two sides to these. I'm not, I'm not arguing we should allow bots, but you have to look at it from both perspectives. Why is SPS dropping? Well, part of it is the picture of like, we just created these barriers to those who were already holding SPS. And we said pretty much, you know, it's gonna be harder to earn. If you wanna stick around, go ahead. But some people are saying no, and that's part of why it's dropping. Some of those are bots, some of those are real people. And then uh, SPS rental costs, I haven't, I haven't actually looked at the SPS pr rental prices, but I expect that if there is reduced demand for SPS, that the rental prices for SPS should go down. Reduced demand, existing supply staying stable or growing, that should mean 
reduction in price. If the rental income possible from SPS goes down, then the then the, the sale value of SPS should go down. I I I believe well theoretically that should be a factor here. I haven't been able to test or confirm that SPS rental prices have gone down. But that's still I think that's logical and so I'm leaving it as one of my considerations. And I have two more considerations. Also we have DC, which is below peg meaning what little SPS was being burnt to create access to DC has stopped. And that might've been small, but I mean, I think it was, you know, there was, I think millions of SPS that was being burned at times when we were close to peg or at peg. Even myself, I burnt some SPS at some times to get some DC to rental cards or whatever, just sort of convenience. It was, it was at peg. So I thought, what the heck? Yeah, sure. I'll just, you know, I, I, I want that value. So I'm going to go ahead and do it. And people did that. And now we were not going to do it at the, at the DC price point that we're at. And so as a result, you know, that is a faucet that closes. And that means again, there's a, that there was a decline in SPS price, even though it was marginal, sorry, there was a decline in SPS supply, even though marginal that was coming out of that process, which has now been closed off. And again, anything that would reduce SPS supply like SPS burning for DEC would have helped the SPS price. And if that stops happening, it's going to hurt SPS price. And that, so that's a factor too. And uh, finally, jealousy capitulation, which I've talked about a couple times on the channel. I, I just want to spend a minute or two just pointing to this because I do think it's absolutely a factor. Because I see even in the recent comment where somebody was talking about D Bitcoin is going to go to 100,000. And uh, I know a lot of people feel Bitcoin's going to go to 100,000 or to a million. And I, I don't disagree with those realities. I actually think that those are very plausible suggestions. And they might even be sooner than many people believe in terms of timeline. But the, but the reality then has to be that you have to wrestle with and people don't want to wrestle with is that why are we more excited about moving from 70,000 where Bitcoin is right now, 69,837 up to 100,000, which is a 30, 40, 35, 40% gain. Why are we more excited about that than, than something like SPS, which, you know, by a lot of people's account could 5X easily, 10X easily, 35% versus 10x is a gigantic differential in terms of reward. Now, you might argue that Bitcoin is a lock to go to 100,000. And you might argue that SPS going to 5 cents or 10 cents is highly unlikely. So there's a there's another conversation that has to happen. I'm not saying they're they're you you have to agree that they're equally possible, but I'm saying if you know, you have to under, you have to think through your thoughts around your confidence in holding a token like SPS and a number and our community is 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 at various levels of thinking this through this through you buy or you sell SPS because you believe or you don't believe in its future price appreciation. And part of why we believe or don't believe in the token price appreciation for SPS is a, is wrapped up in our sentiment around the marketplace and jealousy capitulation, which is this idea of, you know, you know, you understand capitulation. It's this idea of like, you know, you're so excited. You can't get out of the token. You, you you're in euphoria you, and, and then certain it's price starts to decline. You start to feel at some point a sense of capitulation, which is this idea of um, it speaks to this idea that you know, it's never going to come back and therefore I'll sell. And it's usually right before the sort of the, the, the hopelessness phase. And, uh, you know, uh, before long before we start to actually see price appreciation. And so capitulation though can come in, can be sparked by several realities. And one of them is jealousy. So as we look around the marketplace and we see things like Bitcoin and we talk about how it's going to go to a hundred thousand or maybe to a million, we, what we're actually saying is there's green candles over there. I want to chase them. It's already been going up for a year. It's established. It's reliable. Oops. It's established. It's reliable. It's secure. It's guaranteed. I'm going to chase those green candles. So we go confidently toward green candles and we run from the opportunity represented within red candles because absolutely the greatest multipliers are going to be possible where the prices are, the market caps are the lowest. Now, you have to hear me and this is where we're going to finish because I'm not saying just because SPS has got a low token price or that the market cap is quite small that it necessarily has to go up because you could you that logic logic is broken it's not accurate it's not because it's small it has to grow and wow when it grows moon what I'm saying is I have thoughtfully considered Splinterlands the company Sea Monsters the company Splinterlands the game 
SPS the token price, uh, token, and I walk in a degree of confidence for the future of this game and space. Now, the, if that's my foundational consideration that comes out of that whole bigger conversation of this game is both fun and has a future, now we're starting to stand on firm, at least in my heart and mind, firm foundation. Now we start to go, okay, I believe in this thing. So then we start to think, well, at some point, I believe it'll go up. Is it a guarantee? No. Is it plausible? I think so. You have to make the decision for yourself or not. And a lot of people are saying, no, they don't believe it's possible anymore. And that's why that's feeding into price decline. But it's not just out of lack of sentiment for SPS. It's actually out of this jealousy piece toward other gains elsewhere. Do you see that? That's the important point. My capitulation is a, a, a multifaceted factor that happens for a lot of reasons. But in this moment, I think it's being fed into by jealousy of other tokens and how they've been doing. And so people go green. There's there's greener pastures over there. I'm going to chase after that. But when you this is the last thing I want to say to you. If you believe in a token or a game or a space like any sort of equity, even like I believe in Splinterlands, that's hopefully based on logic and thorough review then you shouldn't be particularly concerned if the prices are at a lower point. Lower price points are just a place of lower entry, an opportunity to DCA, DCA in. And then hopefully see even bigger multipliers. Low price doesn't by itself mean good investment though, right? Low price does not mean good investment necessarily, but if you come to hold confidence in the token or the game then low price shouldn't by itself scare anyone either that's the really that's the key point that i don't know if everybody understands and so as we see a lower price we see less confidence because your is your confidence based on thoughtful review of the game or is your confidence based on green or red candles sentiment is it sentiment or logic? And I think you, we each of us need to wrestle with that. These are the these are the factors I'm witnessing that are probably pouring into why SPS price is going lower. But they're also, um, you know, they probably apply to any token and why it might go lower. I think ultimately, you know, the, if you come to believe in a token or a game like Splinterlands, it hopefully isn't based on sentiment, and it hopefully is driven by your fundamental review and concern and you know, interest in the token and the game. And I think out of that place, especially when it's fun and you think it has a future, it starts to be this thing where you can just enjoy it incidentally and the price point can be secondary. It's not even a concern to me that it's we're below a penny because I don't I don't have any concern at all. And that's with thousands of dollars of investment, like tens of thousands of dollars in this thing. Like I think probably even with the price declines, I'm about 30,000 US dollars in this game, video game. Like what? Well, it's because I believe in the thing, because I believe in the future, what could be possible. What is guaranteed? No. What is plausible? And that's good enough for me because I've come to a thoughtful review of what this is. And so it's below a penny. That sucks. But I think there's a there's a path to greater gains. And those gains can be all the more stark or exciting because of the challenge and the adversity and the red candles we've experienced recently. I hope that's true. We'll find out together. If that sounds interesting and you enjoyed the video until the end here, may drop that like. And if you haven't already, make sure you're subscribed. Thanks guys for your time and attention. Have an amazing day. God bless.